If free will may be an illusion, how does one cope with that and still keep control over their life and have aspirations to get better? This is cracker that. One has to embrace the illusion. You know, just... You can't give in to the idea that determinism doesn't mean you don't have control. If anything, for me, the idea of determinism gives me more of a sense of drive because it just makes me feel like things could actually be unfolding for the better if they're deterministic. It's not all up to chance. It's it's a bit of a strange, maybe counterintuitive thing, but essentially if you're seeing the world in that light, if you're thinking on that level, then you can have more control over yourself. Like you can be less about your whimsical self and more about your controlled decision making ambitious i don't know i always found it empowering in that direction for me personally wonder if uh chat has anything to say on that define free will free will will be the idea that you as a conscious human being take actions and do things of your own you know inner desire inner construct but I, i'm of the belief that if there is law and order in terms of structure in the universe and how things happen then our conscious experience is part of that law and order and structure and so if things boil down to chemical reactions and if this thing goes there that thing goes here you know basic laws to govern things then then technically what's happening in our brains is is a part of that and therefore free will itself may be less of this idea of free will but more an ongoing series of reactions that we call emotions or ideas right they're all part of the brain chemistry and some people take that and they don't like it and it makes them feel like they're not in control and for someone like myself even though it sounds counterintuitive i feel like it gives me more freedom to like realize that that's the way the brain works right i mean that's that's coming from someone who's been through cbt cognitive behavioral therapy like, I literally had to reprogram the way my brain thought about things. It was like, actually, what I'm thinking is not healthy. And therefore, I had to identify that and then counteract those thoughts with rational ones. And eventually, that became like an ability to put different ideas into my head, positive ones, better ones, things that, you know, can benefit me as opposed to burden me. It's really simple. Everyone, everyone here has probably experienced a bit of self-doubt, gone too far, a bit of negative thought, I'm not good enough, people don't like me, those sorts of things, right? Well, if you think those things and you think them too often, the pathways in your brain that fire, the synapses that connect to create those thoughts, because that's what thoughts are. There are a bunch of things in your brain firing up and connecting. Um, there is this this habit with the brain that the more things fire the stronger they become so you can get caught in a trap of thinking these negative things right so you know this isn't the answer to that but if you were to always assume something or think something positive deliberately it ends up actually firing those synaptic pathways and you will do it naturally you won't have to think about it so like assuming the best of people is something you can always remind yourself to do especially in this toxic internet online environment, right? And, I, you know, I, I've still got a bit of both in there. I tend to hear both at the same time, then I'm like, I'm going for the positive, because I've I had to deal with a lot of neg negativity up there, right? So I might get a comment from someone that's like, do a face reveal. So the negative side of me, which I always have to keep in check, you know, it can come back, it can be stronger than you think it is sometimes. The negative side can be like, oh, this person is shouting and demanding things of me, right? But the positive side of me can go, that person has probably invested a lot in your videos, enjoy what you do, and just is curious about what you look like. And their way of expressing that is by typing in all caps and tweeting at you in the form of a demand. I mean, it's almost a good thing if you think about it. And uh, I play a lot with sarcasm here. Which I, I also think I, I should maybe ditch the sarcasm a bit because some people don't understand it. I get sarcastic about that stuff because I just get inundated with it constantly. Which can be a little bit irritating, but again, you know, if you think about it, like, there's a lot worse things than being irritated by people, 
you know, enjoying what you do and wanting to see your face. It's almost kind of ridiculous when you say it like that, right? I don't really know where we started with that. What was that about? Free will? Then it was about cognitive behavioral therapy and positivity and negativity. Alpenglob says, no, some of us actually understand sarcasm. It's just one of those things, right, isn't it? Like, some people won't, some people will. It should never really be a reason to stop doing something. Like, it, it relates to my opinion of being offended by something. I think if you're offended by something, that's on you. If you really think this thing is offensive is a really big deal, then there's probably rooms for discussion and talking with people and convincing them or, or whatever. And, uh, and it's kind of like that in a way, right? Like it's, it's on you. What was I saying was on you? Jeez, my brain gets off track so quick. Like at, at the end of the day, like being sarcastic isn't a crime. So if someone doesn't get the sarcasm, unfortunately it's on them. I'm not saying it like, oh, it's on you. It's just that's kind of how it is, right? But yeah, I just, I just feel like, you know, I know that some people aren't getting it and maybe it's a, I'm creating something negative for them. So, uh, Sis the Sniper says, I love sarcasm. Me too. Ironically, I'm pretty terrible at detecting it myself, even though it's like <laughs> my favorite form of humor, mainly from uh, Ricky Gervais. Just the way he uses sarcasm is brilliant. And if people are sarcastic in the way he is, I get it. If they're not, other, other ways of delivering sarcasm tends to go over my head. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, here I am being sarcastic on the internet, right? So listening back to the video that you've just watched, two things come to mind about the beginning part of determinism, and that is quantum universe versus general relativity. Now, I'm not going to act like I really know the ins and outs of these things, but I spend a lot of time in the sciencey community kind of getting my head around some of these concepts and ideas, and one of the things that comes up in the quantum sort of take on the universe is that fundamentally things might actually be random at their core and based on probability so you're working with a probabilistic universe so perhaps from there free will can actually emerge as a consequence of that probabilistic nature that randomness that seems to be inherent at the core of things I really don't like the idea of that, but I am slowly coming around to it. It's always made me a little bit uncomfortable. I kind of like the idea of law and order and things having structure and and sort of meaning through mechanism. So I, I prefer a more general relative, relativistic look at uh, the idea of determinism and free will. But there's also the quantum look at it as well, which kind of says, uh, actually, fundamentally speaking, there are things that are probabilistic and random at the core of what we do but anyway ultimately it ends up just being a tool a way for me to uh, kind of take who I am and steer myself in a better direction if you've been listening to these videos or following me for a while you know I'm interested in self-improvement and uh, the idea that you can evaluate yourself and try and change your behaviors and your habits and, and it kind of plays into that much better than everything being random would be right like, uh, if it were all random, you could sort of go randomly in different directions. And I prefer the idea that I have more control uh, over over myself. And that comes to me through the idea of a deterministic universe where things are playing out. <laughs> it's very odd because that's sort of the opposite, right? In both instances, they're the opposite. But re remember that, like, something happening probabilistically and randomly, that's not... That's not like free will either, is it? Like, it's not the freedom to choose. It's a probability. It's a random event arising from some unknown force. Unless the unknown force was, again, um, free will. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's just some additional thoughts for you on, uh, on that whole topic.